Hey there, this is Anthony Wilkinson, and welcome to, to this inspiring life lesson where we'll be talking about social closification. Yes, I've made up my own word. They made up social distancing, and I've made up social closification. Of course, you may be wondering, what does this mean? So, the alternate title is How to Be Socially Distant and socially close at the same time. I'm Anthony Wilkinson, and I hope you enjoy this lesson. Now, after you're done listening, I invite you to get connected with us at monmouthworshipcenter.org. We are here to help you experience God, love people, and find purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. If you want to connect with others about what you learned today, Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and our Facebook page. All you have to do is search for Mammoth Worship Center. And please be sure to share this message with someone you want to encourage. Thank you for tuning in, and may this presentation help you to connect with Christ and challenge you to draw closer to others as you draw closer to Him. Here we go. Yes, life is better with friends. It's great when we have relationships, isn't it? And you know what a relationship is? A relationship is really just social closeness. And we are all born to experience life in relationship with others. And that's what we've been used to all of our lives. But now, things have changed. And it's not the same as it used to be. We're now spread apart. Our relationships are distanced, and they've even given a word for it, social distancing. Who would have thought we'd ever be in this predicament? And yet, the good news is that social distancing is really just physical distancing. You know, you can be distant from someone standing right beside you. How many of you have uh, been in school or at work and worked with someone closely but had no type of relationship with them, no type of understanding of what their lives were like are like and no type of um, interest in what they're doing and yet they work beside you or they live right near you or they're um, doing activities with you on a regular basis. And likewise, you can be close to someone even when they're far away. I've been living in New Jersey for about the past 25 years or so, and my parents have been back in Michigan, and I see them maybe once a year. Yet, I call my parents at least once a week, sometimes many times a week. I I call my sisters, we text, we um, share memories, and we share our hopes and dreams. And even though they're, you know, 660 miles away, I can still be close to them, even though the the physical distance is great. So the question is, how can we be socially close at the same time as we're experiencing this social distancing? Well, that's what this lesson is about. And we're going to do it by connecting. We're going to figure out how to engage in what I'm calling social closification. So, to learn how to, how to become socially closified, what if we took away your email, took away your phones, took away your computer, and sent you back in time 2,000 years? How would you connect across the miles? Well, that was the situation facing Paul the Apostle. And he had many close friends in a country or a city called Thessalonica in Europe. And he wrote letters to them. And here are a few sentences from one of his letters in the book in the Bible called First Thessalonians. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ living in Thessalonica, brothers and sisters, When we were orphaned by being separated from you for a short time, 
in person, not in thought, out of our intense longing, we made every effort to see you. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. Paul. You see, we're not the first ones to experience all kinds of issues when we're separated from people that we love. Paul experienced this, and he wrote about it, and we can learn something from his experience. The first thing that I want to focus on is his emotions, his intense longing. He experienced an intensity, a serious recognition of feelings that came from deep within his heart. And these emotions are often important for us to recognize so we know that we need to take action. So are you feeling sad or lonely knowing that you aren't seeing your friends and family? Well, it's not good to deny those emotions. It's good to recognize them and acknowledge them because sometimes when you feel sad or lonely, it's a signal for you to take action, action that will change those feelings and bring you joy and comfort. The next thing I want to focus on from Paul's letter to the people in Thessalonica are his thoughts. You see where he said that their separation was an in-person separation, but it was not a separation in thought. Even though he was far away, he was able to keep his mind focused on his friends in Thessalonica. You know, are you thinking about your friends and family that you can no longer see? Philippians 4.8 says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Even though your friends and family are far away, you can still spend time thinking about them. What good memories do you have? Go to your phones. You probably have thousands of pictures you haven't even looked at in a while. You know, go through those pictures. Maybe make some picture albums. Check through some old shoeboxes you may have with sentimental photos or notes that you may have exchanged. You know, Christmas cards, birthday cards, even, even text messages with maybe funny memes or uh, emojis that, that brought you some joy. Perhaps there was a special touching email that you received from one of your family members. Take a time to, to go through these things so you can think about your friends and family you're not, seeing, you're not seeing because those thoughts will change your feelings. Those thoughts can bring you joy and comfort. And then, of course, thoughts can lead to efforts. Paul recognized that even though he was longing for them, there was something that he could do. And what he did is that he made every effort to see them. That's what we have to do. We, we can think about others. We can long for them. But we have to take action and make efforts to connect with them. So are you making efforts to reach out to the friends and family you cannot see? I know it's quite unusual, but now might be a good time to write a letter to take out some paper and a pen and jot down a nice note, put it in an envelope, slap a stamp on it, put it in the, bo in the post office box. Of course, if you don't want to spend time doing that, you could do something short and sweet and simple and just send a text message or an email. And probably the best way to connect with someone who's far away is to make a phone call so they can hear your voice so they can sense your emotions, so that they can experience your presence in real time. Something that a letter, a text, and an email just won't do. If you are big on Facebook or other social media, you might want to send a direct message or post on their Facebook page. There are many things you can do to actually take action to make connections with the friends and family you cannot see. Let's take a look at one more thing that Paul did. Look at the 
last paragraph here. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. Paul spoke to the Lord Jesus Christ about his friends and family that he could not see. He wanted Jesus to do something for them. He wanted Jesus to make their love increase. He wanted Jesus to make their love overflow for one another. If Paul could not be there for his love to overflow among them, then he wanted Jesus to be there and cause their love to overflow for one another. So have you made an effort to learn the needs of your loved ones during this time, this time of crisis, so that you can pray to the Lord Jesus to meet those needs? You know, call, when you call them on the phone, take a moment and Think about some open-ended questions you could ask about how they're being affected by the outbreak of the coronavirus. What's going on with their jobs? What's going on with their parents, their children, their siblings? What's going on with their neighbors, their, their town, their state? How is it impacting them? And be genuinely interested. You know, when you're talking to them, give them your complete attention you're not texting or typing on the computer or looking at something else while you're talking to them. And as they speak about what they're interested in and what they're experiencing, just, just say simple things like, tell me more about that. That helps people to feel loved and help, helps people to feel like you really care about them. And as you're being a great listener, you're going to discern not only the needs they may describe expressly, but you're also going to sense the emotions and the spiritual needs which lie beneath the surface. And those are the true unmet needs that you want to see what you can do to meet and that you want to pray for. Now, when you're talking to them and people are being transparent, it's really important to maintain confidentiality. Yes, it's important to pray for people, but no, you really shouldn't take their prayer needs and share it with others to encourage others to pray for them without express permission. So be careful to um, keep secrets and confidentiality and not to disclose things that you don't have the permission to disclose because um, during times of crisis sometimes people may share things that are intensely personal. So what you're doing as you're talking is you're communicating concern, you're showing compassion for their situation, and you're, you're letting them know that you, that you understand, that you can sense what they're going through, and that makes them feel loved. So, now we know what it means to engage in social closification. You see, this is how to be socially close to someone even when you are physically far away. First, acknowledge your feelings of longing. It's perfectly normal to feel sad about not being able to see those you're so used to seeing on a regular basis. Think about the good times with them. Bring back the memories, and that can bring you some joy and comfort. And then take action to connect with them by phone or in writing. And then find out their needs and pray for them. The Lord Jesus will hear your prayers. He will increase their love and he will give them the peace and comfort that you desire them to have. Well, thank you again for spending time with us today learning how you can get connected with people even in the midst of a pandemic. If you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus and you want to get connected with him too, you can right now. Just believe he's a real person living today after rising from the dead. Choose to follow his teachings rather than your own ways and pray for him to become the leader of your life. He'll say yes in a heartbeat. This is Anthony Wilkinson signing off. May the grace of our Lord Jesus be with you.